In today's video, we're gonna talk about the healthiest fast food orders. These are the things that I would personally order if I'm out in the world at restaurants like Subway, Starbucks, Panda Express, Taco Bell, and even McDonald's. I wanted to comb through all of these menus because here at the Fit Father and Fit Mother Project, we believe that fast food can be a part of your nutrition plan. And yes, it's obvious that we wanna be preparing most of our own healthy foods, but sometimes life happens. We're in a pinch, we're out on the go, we're doing stuff with our kids and our families, and we need something quick. And that's why we actually build in these good options into our plans, and I wanna shoot this video to give you some insight on some good options out in the world so you have more flexibility and it's easier to stick to your plan without falling off the rails and ordering some crazy stuff in these fast food restaurants. So we're gonna kick it off with one of the most popular fast food places in the world, Subway, the place where you can eat fresh. So Subway is a fast food chain that's always been a little health conscious. They've always had these different marketing campaigns around having lower calorie meals. And it turns out there's a couple decent things you can get at Subway. The first thing is you can get a six inch deli turkey sub, which is basically six inch of choosing any kind of bread you want. Personally, I'd probably get one of their whole wheat or oat style breads. You get the turkey on there, so the deli sliced turkey, and then what makes or breaks your sub is what you actually put on it. So put on all the vegetables that you like, the lettuce, the tomatoes, the pickles, maybe those pepperoncinis. Then you wanna watch out for the sauces you put on it. Personally, I would do mustard or hot sauce. As you're gonna see when we go throughout this video, the sauces are a really big thing when it comes to fast food chains, and mustard and hot sauce are almost always your friends. So if you set it up this way, let's say you have turkey, a little bit of cheese, lettuce, tomato, pepperoncinis, and some mustard, that is like a 350 to 400 calorie sub. Totally good to go and works really well. Now the second good thing to get at Subway is what their marketing team calls the no bready bowl, which is Subway's fancy way of saying a salad, which basically means a bunch of lettuce and then you can put protein on top of it. And from all the reviews that I found online, a lot of people love their grilled chicken no bready bowl. So it's a bunch of really nice sliced grilled chicken on top of the salad. And you just wanna watch how much dressing you put on it. So if they give you some dressing, use about half of it at max and just load it up with a bunch of other things. You can also drizzle it with mustard and hot sauce. Then you have a really good high protein meal. So Subway is a place where you can do pretty decent. Let's move on to number two. We're going to talk about Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts. Now, regardless of how you feel about their coffee, Starbucks is pretty much everywhere. You see them in the airports, you see them on the corner of many intersections, and they actually have a couple decent things that you can order. There are two things in particular that I like on the Starbucks menu, and they both come from the breakfast menu. The first thing is I actually like Starbucks turkey, bacon, cheddar, and egg white sandwich. This thing is only 250 calories, and it tastes quite good. The other thing you can get is the spinach, feta, and egg white wrap, which is around 300 calories. So if you're in an airport and you need a quick breakfast, Starbucks can be decent. Now, Dunkin' is like the arch rival of Starbucks, if you will, and it's certainly popular on the East Coast of the United States. They also have some pretty good, decent breakfast options. One of the things that Dunkin' Donuts is actually quite good is their egg white bowl. This thing's 250 calories, and it's basically just egg whites and vegetables in a cup. I mean, basically pure protein. It doesn't have a ton of nutritional value other than it is protein, but it certainly doesn't have a lot of crap in it. Now, you can also get their veggie egg white sandwich on multigrain, which is kind of similar to that egg McMuffin kind of thing from Starbucks, and it's also decent. It's under 300 calories, tastes pretty good, and it's a, it's a pretty harmless option. Now, in terms of drinks at both Starbucks and Dunkin', you can always go with any kind of coffee, a brewed coffee, like a cold brew or a regular Americano or a regular just filter coffee. You can also get some of their green teas or black teas. You certainly want to avoid a lot of these drinks that have a lot of the milks and the creams and the sugars. I think any drink you order from them and they typically give you the calories should be under 100 calories because if it gets into the 200, 300, 400, you're getting all of that from pure sugar and you do not want that in your diet. Let's get into the next fast food restaurant on this list. Our next fast food chain is Wendy's. And for every reason, maybe because they had good marketing, I tend to think of Wendy's as a like, little bit higher quality than some of the other chains. And many people tend to agree that they tend to have some really good things you can order. And there are three things that I like from the Wendy's menu. The first thing is their grilled chicken sandwich. This thing has 320 calories. It's herb marinated grilled chicken breasts on top of some crisp lettuce, tomato, and a warm toasted bun. Now, if you wanna get even healthier, you can hold off on the mayo, of course get the mustard and hot sauce if you like, and you can even remove one of those buns to save another 50 calories and just do like a half style bun. But either way, this is like 300 calories, there's a good amount of protein, like over 20 grams, and you're really not gonna be doing too much damage if you go ahead and get the grilled chicken. Now, the next thing on the Wendy's item that I actually think is pretty decent is actually the Junior Deluxe Cheeseburger. 
Yes, I said the cheeseburger. Believe it or not, this thing only has 350 calories, not that much more than the grilled chicken sandwich. And it's good because it has that ground beef, which gives you around 15 grams of protein. It also has some lettuce, some tomato. You wanna hold off on getting any of the really big mayo sauces or stuff like that. Look, if you have a little bit of ketchup and a little bit of mustard, like that's gonna be okay. And again, you can take off one of those buns and save yourself some calories and you still had a cheeseburger and it was under 400 calories. That's not too bad. Now the final thing at Wendy's that's pretty good is their chili. They actually make a ground beef chili with a bunch of different kinds of beans. You can get a small or a large. And again, it's around 300 calories. It's loaded with protein and fiber and it's a pretty dec decent option if you're out on the go and you see a Wendy's on the road and you wanna get something that's not too bad. Let's get into the next restaurant. The next fast food restaurant on our list is Chick-fil-A. And this company kind of exploded on the scene around 10 years ago to challenge a lot of the burger focused places to say, hey, we're a fast food that prioritizes in chicken. And not surprisingly, the best things at Chick-fil-A happen to be grilled chicken. In fact, they have a 12 piece grilled chicken nuggets that's only 200 calories and 75% of those calories come from protein. I mean, you're basically just getting grilled chicken. Chick-fil-A is just making it for you and they're giving it to you. Now here's the catch. Chick-fil-A has a bunch of different sauces and they're very proud of their sauces. You can see them all here. There's a bunch of different ones. They come in those cute little containers and most of them are total BS. If you look at the ingredients on these things, the first ingredient is typically soybean oil, which is a really low quality inflammatory oil. And then there's a bunch of spices and flavorings and preservatives and stuff like that. When it comes to the sauces that are actually good, what you wanna do is get the zesty buffalo sauce, which again is similar to a hot sauce, so I hope you're starting to see the theme, or you can also get their sweet and spicy sriracha. These things are roughly around 50 calories, so you can enjoy and dunk those little nuggets in, and it's very good. The other thing that's good at Chick-fil-A is the grilled chicken sandwich. Hopefully you're starting to see a theme here. It's under 400 calories, and of course you can even cut the calories by removing one of the buns. Now Chick-fil-A does typically serve this with a, uh, with a honey mustard, which is adding quite a bit of sugar. So if you just say no honey mustard and you put on some of your own sauces, you're gonna save some more calories and it still tastes pretty decent. Let's get into the next restaurant on this list. Now next on our list is Chipotle, and this restaurant is a fan favorite of many people who are fitness minded because you can basically customize whatever you want, and Chipotle markets that their ingredients are a little higher quality than some of their competitors, and I personally tend to agree. Now when you go into Chipotle, here's exactly how you order. First off, you say you want a bowl. You do not want a burrito. That tortilla is just gonna be a bunch of flour and unnecessary carbs and calories that you don't need. Now when it comes to the rice, if you're at a goal weight right now and you just wanna have a nutritious meal, you can tell them to just go light on the rice. White rice or brown rice, there's not actually that much of a difference between the two. Yeah, the brown has a little more fiber, some more vitamins, but if you really prefer the white rice, it's not that different. So you can give a small scoop of the rice or skip it entirely, but I do highly suggest you you get the beans in the fajita veggies. Me personally, I think the black beans are better. And if they load those things up, the beans have the fiber, they have protein, and the fajita veggies give you some greens. So that's a pretty decent way. And it all tastes very good. Now in terms of the proteins at Chipotle, they're all pretty comparable, believe it or not, between the chicken breast, the steak, the shredded barbacoa, the carnitas, and even their tofu options. They're all pretty comparable in terms of calories, so you can pick whatever one you want. Personally, I would go with either the barbacoa, which is that shredded beef, or the grilled chicken. Both of them are quite good. And if you want to really up the protein, you can certainly go double protein and just get more. It costs a couple extra bucks, but either way, it's pretty good even if you get the regular serving. And many people believe there's a little hack at Chipotle where you can say you want half of one, half of the other, and they end up giving you a little bit more. So you can try to gamify the system if you want. But either way, you get your protein. Now on top, what you want to avoid is you want to avoid the cheese, avoid the sour cream, avoid the queso. This is where a lot of those calories come on top. You can get any salsa you want. So you can get that kind of pico de gallo, you can get their medium or hot salsas. You can throw some lettuce on top, which I highly recommend. And then if you want to indulge a little bit, you can get the guacamole. It certainly costs more. Sometimes they skimp you. It makes the bowl a little less value, but it is good healthy fats. It does fill you up. And overall, that's really solid. If you build a bowl exactly how I described, it's going to be around 400 to 500 calories. Very filling, very easy, and a pretty decent meal. Let's get into the next one on our list. The next fast food restaurant on our list is Panera Bread. And I'm gonna be straight up honest, I never got into Panera. I just couldn't really get behind it, but it is very popular and I do wanna talk about it. One of the things about Panera is they specialize in these kind of like gourmet style sandwiches. And the irony is that their sandwiches at Panera typically have 300 plus more calories than a cheeseburger from McDonald's. They typically have 600, 700, 800 calories. That's because they have some really dense calorie breads. They put a lot of aiolis and spreads on these things and they're just not that healthy. So if you ever go to Panera, your move is to get a salad. And the good news is they actually have quite a bit of delicious salads. Here's some of my personal favorites. They have the green goddess Cobb salad with chicken, which is pretty cool. You get, a, you get some eggs, you get some blue cheese and some good stuff like that. 
They have an Asian sesame chicken salad, a Caesar salad with chicken, and they have this Mediterranean bowl, which has some quinoa, some feta, some olives, some hummus. So all these are great options that are gonna be around 500 calories. Now with all these restaurants, when you get the dressing, it's not gonna be as good as if you had dressing from home, something that was made with like extra virgin olive oil or avocado oil or higher quality oils. Typically they're making these with probably some soybean oil or canola oil. So go light on the dressing or maybe you skip it entirely. But either way, the salads or the move of Panera, skip the breads, skip the sandwiches. You'd be better off honestly getting a cheeseburger from Wendy's at this point. Let's get into the next restaurant on our list. The next restaurant on our list is Taco Bell. And this is one of those kind of polarizing restaurants. Some people actually love Taco Bell. Other people question the actual meats that they serve there. Is this really chicken and steak? But either way, Taco Bell is a place you can get quite a bit of food while keeping it under 500 calories. And here's exactly what you order. You get either a grilled chicken or a grilled steak, soft taco, fresco style. The key word here is fresco style. What fresco style is, is they take out all those mayo-based sauces and the cheeses, and they replace it with tomatoes and some fresh diced vegetables, which, hey, that sounds a little less fun, but get this, you can get three soft shell chicken tacos or three grilled steak tacos, and it's still under 500 calories if you get them fresco style. So you can make up for the fact that you don't get your cheese with a little more volume of food, which is kind of decent. And again, if you load this thing up with hot sauce or something like that, it still tastes pretty good. It can work in a pinch. You absolutely want to avoid some of their supreme stuff with all the beans and the cheese and the sauces and the quesadilla kind of things. You want to stick with the fresco style soft tacos with the salsa and then it's pretty decent. Let's get into the next food I have on this list. Next on our list is Panda Express. And now, typically when we're doing some of these Asian dishes, they're loaded with a lot more sodium because we're oftentimes stir frying things with a lot of soy sauce and stuff like this. And Panda's no exception. You're gonna be getting a lot of sodium in here, but there are some decent choices you can make from a calorie perspective. Now Panda actually has this walk smart part of their menu, which is like the healthier stuff and they actually highlight that, which is really cool. So here are the best entrees and main dishes that you can get. The first one is the mushroom chicken. The second one is the string bean chicken. The third one is the beef and broccoli, or the fourth one is the black pepper Angus steak. Each of these is around 200 to 250 calories, and it's basically like a chicken or a steak with some kind of vegetable with whatever kind of like flavor profile that you want. Now, when you go to pick your sides, you probably want to pick one side, and the one side you want to get is their super greens. Literally, they made this so you can order healthy at Panda. It is going to be some some steamed broccoli with some kale, with some cabbage, and it actually tastes pretty good and it adds 100 calories. So if you got one side with any of those entrees, you can have a 350 to 400 calorie meal from Panda. That's basically veggies and protein, and that's pretty decent. Now here's the catch. Most people, when they go to Asian restaurants, they wanna get the rice, but if you get the rice at Panda, you're adding another 420 calories to your meal right? And certainly if you begin to put a lot of salt on that, you're going to notice that the combination of rice and salt for most people causes a lot of bloat. So maybe you didn't gain fat from this meal, but you certainly often carry a lot of water retention after this. So I would be careful because there's enough salt already in those walked entrees. So I'd say just stick with a walked entree plus one of the super greens. Let's get into the next menu item on this list. Now, last but certainly not least, we have McDonald's, the place with the golden arches. Now I wanna say this, McDonald's got substantially less healthy over the last year and a half when they removed salads from their menu. They made that call because it turns out people don't typically order salads from McDonald's. Go figure. Well, there's a couple good things that you can order. If you go to McDonald's for breakfast, you can actually get an Egg McMuffin. Their standard Egg McMuffin, which has a little bit of ham, the egg, the cheese, and obviously the two muffins, is only 250 calories. If you get the one that has the sausage Egg McMuffin, it's over 400 calories. And if you get the hash browns with that, it's another 300 calories on top of that. So that is no bueno. What you wanna do is get one to two Egg McMuffins. Maybe get the standard Egg McMuffin, and if you take one of those little bit muffin tops off that, so you're doing like a half Egg McMuffin, and you eat two of those, you're at like 400 calories. So it's a pretty decent breakfast. Now, when it comes to lunch and dinner menu, McDonald's is not great. Your best option actually is a cheeseburger. Their cheeseburger has 315 calories, and you can have a little bit of mustard and ketchup. You wanna make sure that you're avoiding some of these mayos and bigger sauces on there, as that's gonna order, just give a lot more inflammatory fats that you don't want in your diet. Now, if you're feeling really bold, you can get the double cheeseburger. The double cheeseburger has more of the meat, more of the cheese. It's 450 calories. In this case, you might even just do it protein style, where you just get the lettuce on the top of it, no bun whatsoever, and that'll save you around 100 calories. So at McDonald's, you're typically going to be getting some of these cheeseburgers and stuff like this without the sauces, and obviously the Egg McMuffin for breakfast. 
Now, I hope you enjoyed this video and you got some ideas. And the main idea is obviously you can write down some of these menu items and you have a concept of what you can order. But the overall picture is, look, we're here with our nutrition to be consistent long-term. And that means we can't just say, oh, fast food's off the menu like forever. I mean, maybe it is for you and maybe you're always really good at prepping, but for most families and most people to be realistic, you just need to know and have all these different tools and options for when you're out in the world. And the cool thing is with the menu items that I selected today, almost all of them are high protein, under five. 500 calories and it'll be like good damage control and if you just do this on occasion a couple times once a week twice a week when you're out with the kids it's not going to make or break your progress especially when you're good the rest of the time but it will give you some freedom knowing there's many things you can order i hope you enjoyed this video now in the comments below i want you to comment on some of your favorite healthy fast food restaurants and some of your takes on ranking some of the best fast food restaurants are there ones you think are just legitimately higher quality than others? Ones you think are absolutely disgusting that you would never eat at? Let's get some comments going in the discussion because I think it's gonna be pretty fun. And also let me know if there's any of these that you've tried in the past or you plan on trying because this is some simple stuff that you can incorporate for you and your family. This is Dr. Ray from the Fit Father Project and Fit Mother Project signing off. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll talk to you very soon.